Hey guys, and welcome back to How to Make Elements from Household Materials. Today's element will be bismuth. Now, bismuth is found in almost any pharmacy, such as Shropper's Drug Mart or London Drugs River, as a stomach relief pill called, um, this is bismuth subsilicate. Um, so anyhow, this type of bismuth pill here, um, contains a fair amount of bismuth. You can see about... Uh, just under half of the package um, is actually made out of bismuth subsilicate. And we should be able to extract the bismuth out of this with uh, a couple other common um, materials. One of them being hydrochloric acid, which can be bought at uh, Home Depot or wherever as muriatic acid. And um, the other thing we'll need is common household aluminum foil. Now you can buy this like anywhere. Aluminum foil is super easy to find. If you don't have aluminum foil, use aluminum pop cans or whatever. So those are the two things that we need. So let's open these up and see what's inside. Okay, so after opening up those two boxes, um, you can see that there's 96 tablets in those two boxes. Now that's plenty, but just for um, video purposes, we're going to actually process all of this and see how much bismuth we can get out of two boxes. Now those two boxes cost about $7 together, so I'm not sure if our yield is going to be worth our while actually extracting it out of these, or if it will be cheaper just to buy bismuth metal online. Now, buying stuff online can be a hassle, so of course, it, for some people, it would be much easier just to extract it from these tablets. But we'll see how good of a yield we get. So, the first step to do is going to be to open up all of these, stick them into a small jar, and crush them into a fine powder. So, um, I'll be back when that's done. This should help um, make a higher surface area so that it reacts in the hydrochloric acid to create bismuth um, chloride much faster. If we just stuck in these tabs, it would take a whole, very, very long time for it all to react. So um, I'll be back in a moment. Okay, so um, I stuck it in a blender and uh, ground it up so it was super fine. Uh, it was my science blender, so uh, you don't use your normal food blender. Use something dedicated to science so um, that you don't ruin your food or whatever. Um, anyhow, so it's been bl bl blended up until it was a fine powder. And uh, let's go over to the scale here. I have it zeroed out on this container. Let's see how much it weighs. Oop. Okay, well, we have 97 grams. Um, that's also including that because it's also on the pressure thing. 97 grams of bismuth subsilicate. Which means that the two packages probably contain a total of 100 grams, but um, some 3 grams or so is probably still stuck in the blender or something, and I won't be able to get that out. But um, anyhow, that's plenty of uh, bismuth powder, so um, I'm going to stick this into a larger container and um, get some hydrochloric acid ready for it. So uh, I'll be back when that is ready. Okay, so I have um, a larger container here. Uh, there's our bismuth subsilicate powder. And uh, here's some muriatic acid, also known as hydrochloric acid. So um, I'm going to open up this, pour some into our container. Now I have um, opted to uh, pour the uh, powder into the acid instead of the other way around because I think it'll just be easier. So start with a bit. Oh, lots of fizzing. That means something happening. Okay, so uh, I'm going to slowly add the rest of the powder and be back when I'm done. Okay, so um, I've added all the bismuth to the um, hydrochloric acid. Now when you do that, um, I think what happens is because those tablets also contain calcium carbonate, I think the calcium carbonate reacts with the hydrochloric acid, creating calcium chloride and carbon dioxide, which creates a huge mass of foaming mess and goes everywhere. So. Don't add it all at once, add it very slowly. I made the mistake of adding it all at once, and a bunch of it all went over the sides. And then, the second thing I did, is after it went over the sides, when I tried to pick it up um, with gloves, it was slippery, so um, it fell over sideways and most of it fell out. So um, that wasn't so good either. But luckily I still had a bit left, so um, if I lean that over top. Oh, sorry, that's my end cap. Um, so you can see the ugly mixture in there. That's because I've now added some aluminum foil. You can see there's some bits of aluminum foil in there. And that's displacing the um, bismuth, creating black bismuth metal um, because it's in very fine form. And then aluminum chloride, which is in solution. 
So what we will do with this is um, continue adding metal until when you make a streak on a piece of aluminum foil such as this. See, so I've been testing a few times, but if you make a streak, it should be pretty light, but if it darkens up after a moment, then that means that there's still bismuth in solution because it will still exchange places with the aluminum. So then you'll just want to keep adding aluminum. Once that stops, then you know you have all your bismuth out. So um, I'm not even going to try to calculate a yield because it's going to be extremely low due to all the losses we've had. I would like to retry this in the future, um, and I will hopefully not mess up so bad. Um, so anyhow, um, the next step is just going to be to keep adding aluminum foil, and uh, I'll sh be back when no more can be added. Okay, so you can see we finished reacting the aluminum, and um, I added a bit of extra hydrochloric acid at the end to dissolve all remaining aluminum, then I let it stand for a bit. So um, in there you can see there's a bit of bubbly foamy stuff still on the top, um, because we didn't. Uh, that was from the very beginning with the calcium carbonate um, reaction, forming carbon dioxide and all that foam. Um, but it, for most part, it's all bismuth metal in there, and that foam will be gone as soon as we heat it up. So, it has been totally uh, filtered off, so I'm going to remove this, stick it on a brick, grab our blowtorch, and melt it down. So I'll show you that in a moment. Okay, so let's attempt to melt this down now. It is wet, so um, it will take a moment to um, actually dry out. And I'll probably skip through this part and show you after. Okay, so after it's been melted down, um, well, it'll be melted into a shape. Um, I shaped this into a rectangle, but um, that is pure bismuth metal there. It's uh, probably slightly contaminated. You can see the back of it has a bit of that brick stuck to it. But um, it's quite nice bismuth, I think, so it's perfect for my element collection, and I'm very happy. Anyhow, okay, thanks. Bye.